Vardio to be the next defender to win the Ballon d'Or. I think Vardio, and I mean, this might be sacrilege, but I think he's the closest thing to Maldini we've seen. I've spent the last five months going back in time. Hey, Scott! Unearthing football predictions from the deepest, darkest pits of the internet. And the results were shocking. Some of the best being Nostradamus level predictions. The comments have been absolutely flooded with your predictions. Welcome back everybody to the Football Time Machine subscriber special. We're back again with some more of your predictions. So let's see which one of my subscribers have the best ball knowledge. Let's get into this. Answer, please. Essie will retire in 2025 and live mean Yamal will win the Ballon d'Or in 2025. Like the passing of the torch, like Messi touched him as a child. I don't, don't want to say that. Messi baptized him as a baby. No, I think he's a Muslim. Messi held him as a baby and he passed his golden touch onto him. The mean Yamal looks literally like a freak of a build for a 17 year old, which is quite the opposite of what Messi was at 17 probably. But you know, the world works in mysterious ways. Okay. Yeah, that might be a, an amazing passing on of the torch at that age. I could see it. This, the script writers are on it. Vardio to be the next defender to win the Ballon d'Or. I think Vardio, and I mean, this might be sacrilege, but I think he's the closest thing to Maldini we've seen in the last few years. You need a he could be nominated for the Ballon d'Or. When pigs fly. <laughs> if City have just a ridiculous season. Palmer starting as Cam for Real Madrid when Bellingham leaves for Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, Palmer stocks are so high at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me if Real Madrid are already looking into it. Palmer could go. I mean, Palmer's on a seven year contract. He Palmer could honestly go for like 180 million in 2026. Would that be bold? I don't think it would. To Real Madrid, Bellingham goes off to Liverpool, which kind of makes sense. So Bellingham moving on to Liverpool to try in England, and Palmer going off and playing Cam for play pulling the strings for Real Madrid. Palmer has no loyalties to Chelsea, and I appreciate him being at the club, but you know, if Chelsea don't start challenging for Champions Leagues, then he will go off to a bigger club. Nicholas Jackson, top goal scorer in the Prem, either this season or next. Well, this season might be a bit soon. Next season, Perhaps, you know, if Haaland leaves, it's anyone's game. I'm so glad Nicholas Jackson is getting his flowers. It was quite clear that people watched him week in, week out, that he was a really good player. He just needed to work on his finishing a bit. His hold-up play and his feet are amazing for a centre-forward. And this season, he's starting to prove it. He's putting them away, putting the numbers up, and people are starting to realise, actually, Chelsea may not have needed a striker after all. I really like him. His attitude's great. He's, he's great for the team. And I like that he offered a bit of fierceness up against uh, John Obi Mikel when he was saying, oh, we need Osserman, we need Osserman. Vietnam will reach the 2030 World Cup win a continental title. Asian football has a lot to do to reach the levels of Europe, same with America, but I'm hearing a lot about teams like Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia. They really don't have the facilities they need to be on that level. I found something. A ball. I mean, come on, is this not one of the most beautiful settings you've ever seen in your life? Despite being pretty unfit and out of the game for the last month drinking lots of beers, I did put a shift in before a local came over who I thought was about to kick me off the pitch, but no one's that mean around here. He actually told me that there was a local team that played here every day at 5pm and trained. I couldn't believe how amazing these training facilities were. I mean, pff, beats Power League in Zumbro. But they've probably got some stars coming through. It does seem like Vietnam always trip over themselves when trying to qualify for the World Cup, but I do think they probably have it in them. And Mourinho will compete for the Europa League with Fenerbahce. Mourinho always does a job at whatever club he goes, and it's quite clear when he leaves, everything goes to shit. Same thing happening to Roma right now. There's some really good teams in the Europa League this season, so it might be pretty hard for him, but with Jose, he's the special one. You just don't know. By the 2040s, Concaf and Comabor 
will... I've, I've never actually tried to pronounce those before. I've never had to. We'll give them two decades to merge, but we'll start seeing this with the recent Copper America being hosted in the US. So what he's saying is South America and North America will fuse, basically because why not? It kind of makes sense. I feel like the World Cup in 2026 is going to influence a hell of a lot going on in North American football. Obviously, we saw that with 94, that new wave and that new generation of soccer players. I think we're going to see that again. The sport is getting so big now, and obviously with Messi over there, it's growing at a crazy rate. You know, we might see this them just all compete in one big competition by 2040, like this guy says. That makes a lot of sense. Oil clubs will exist in the future, but I think they're going to use a different resource, probably like the moon. That is a great prediction. In another video in a football time machine we're doing for 2050, a lot of people predicted that solar energy would be the next big oil club thing. Look, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but if solar energy or <laughs> lunar energy, as this guy's suggesting, football is always going to be fueled by the most amount of money. It's quite clear it's becoming a money sport. If we become a space-faring civilization, then a World Cup type event will happen between planets in the solar system could occur. Powerhouses of this tournament might be Earth, along with Transform with Mars and Venus. I love the idea of this, intergalactic sports. I feel like, should we find life on other planets? I mean, we can't all guarantee they have two legs and two arms, so football might not be the game, let's be honest. It could be a slug from B Quadrant 9P2. Football might be our sport, but I know what you mean. I like the idea. If we can get the Americans good at football or soccer, then we could probably get the slugs from B Quadrant 9P2 to be good at football as well. So I like what you're thinking. My predictions are Arsenal are going to win nothing while Spurs and their legend Harry Kane will win their first major trophy. Are you saying Harry Kane to come back to Spurs and win a trophy before Arsenal do? I think Spurs might win a trophy without Harry Kane. How, how wild of a take is that? This season? Next season? Europa League? England will win the Nations League and then the Euros and then the Finalissima and then the World Cup. Jesus Christ. This... I, I, I can't see England winning that much, mate. Knowing England would win the Nations League and lose everything else because, you know, winning something that means absolutely nothing is English DNA currently. By 2030, Arsenal will have at least two Premier Leagues and one Champions League. Look, you guys know... I'm not the biggest fan of Arsenal, but look, I do think it would be nice for my fellow Londoners, my boys back home, that Arsenal win something in their lifetime. As a Chelsea fan, supporting football since 2002, I have literally seen Chelsea win everything. And my friends who have supported Arsenal since 2002 have went from the best team in England and then a massive, massive dry patch for the past 20 years. Okay, they won an FA Cup and a Community Shield, but they haven't seen the heights that Chelsea have reached. So for their sake, I hope this guy's right. Winning two Premier Leagues in a Champions League, that's quite bold in the next six years, but it could happen. Dejan Brown will be the next top Premier League striker. Derby look like they're doing all right in the championship. They've got back up. Many Derby fans I talked to recently thought, you know, the next aim is getting back to the Premier League and maybe Brown will be that striker to bring them there, maybe in next season or the season after. Um, they've settled pretty well back in the championship, but they do have the utensils too. They should be there. They should have been in the championship the whole time, to be honest. And just United will win at least four of the next 10 Premier Leagues under Ten Hag. What is this guy smoking? Manchester United. I love how everyone had them coming top four this season. And um, yeah, where are they now? Evan Ferguson will have a 30 goal season in 28-29 and Brighton will win the Premier League. To be fair, Evan Ferguson looks like the perfect mould for a Premier League striker. Young, isn't he? He's like 20, 19, 20. So in three seasons time, do I see Evan Ferguson balling out in the Premier League? I actually do. He he looks like the perfect, perfect centre forward. Don't I think he struggled with injuries in the last season or so, but if he stays injury free, he looks like he's going to be a machine. He really does. Liverpool will not concede more than 15 goals, beating Mourinho's Chelsea or at least matching them. When's this? I, I can't see that record ever being beaten. I really can't. I took that for granted that season as well. Palmer will win the Ballon d'Or in his career, probably after he leaves Chelsea. I think people are now waking up and realising that Cole Palmer just isn't a penalty merchant. Last season, 
He got a lot of slack. I mean, I remember being in the pub for the Euros and the excitement around Palmer. You'd have girls who don't even watch football knowing who Cole Palmer is, which says all you need to know about the guy's reputation. But in the last few weeks, seeing his, seeing his stocks go through the roof makes me so chuffed as a Chelsea fan. I think people are waking up and smelling the coffee. A new generation will come through and win the World Cup. It'll either be Germany or Spain. Golden generation from Spain or Germany. I mean, all of them always have golden generations. Spain look like they're already in their next golden generation. Uh, kinda. They've got some good wingers. They've got some good players about. Gula to join Aston Villa. Loan and get 20 goals and assists. Gula looks like a top, top player. Turkey's next big star. It'd be really cool to see him come to the Premier League. He looks like a real talent from Real Madrid. Somehow Don Carlo is actually getting Gula playing at the moment in that star-studded team, which is amazing. But maybe he might go on loan just to get more game time. If City get relegated, Liverpool wins the league hands down. Liverpool look good. Liverpool have a really, really strong starting eleven. I would say for the for the next couple of seasons that is. So do Arsenal, obviously. Arsenal's team's unreal. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Arsenal DNA to bottle the league if City weren't there uh, and Liverpool would be there to clean up the pieces. Maybe. Brentford to be a consistent top seven team in the next five years. I love Brentford from West London myself. Uh, used to go see them growing up. To see them in the Premier League at the moment has been brilliant. And I honestly thought at the start of this season, losing Tony, they are, they'll be going back down. They're not, they're holding their own setting records in the Premier League as well. Literally three goals in the first minute in their last three games. Pep will become the England manager next summer and manage England at the 2026 World Cup. I think it genuinely would be over for everyone if Pep became the England manager. I really do. As much as I think the England manager job should always go to an Englishman, whilst Pep could be out of contract next summer, I think they should just go for it, surely. I know a lot of English fans wouldn't want to hear that, but just give it a go. If he leaves City this summer and they say to Carsley, look, we'll give you the job after Pep, but we're going to give him one go at the 2026 World Cup, I'll be game. Give it Giggsy to the end of the season. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It has been, honestly, so fun looking through all of those predictions. There are so many to go still that I need to go through. If I haven't mentioned you in this episode, you will be mentioned in the coming episodes. There's just so many to go through, but they are brilliant to talk about and keep them coming because I love talking about them. And Looking into the future of the sport. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.